News 3 time now is 8.33. Continuing coverage in a News 3 investigation, our team of investigators has learned Chesapeake police lawfully destroyed evidence that potentially could have created reasonable doubt in a robbery case. News 3's Jessica Larche, I know you've been looking into this case for some time now, and part of the story is really bizarre. Yes, we've been following this case for years now, and here's where the story stands. So this is Brian Falcon. He is fighting his conviction for the robbery of a pizza delivery woman in Chesapeake. But he says the surveillance image you see there of a different man robbing a convenience store looks just like him, but it didn't surface until after Falcon was convicted and sent to prison. I'll tell you more about that in a moment, but first let's bring you up to speed in our investigation. As I shared last week, former basketball coach Brian Falcon and his friend Brandon Smith were arrested for the January 2012 robbery of a pizza delivery woman. Two unmasked men approached her and stole $14 from her pocket. Now we learned from court records that the DNA from her pockets does not connect Falcon or Smith to the crime. The black gun found in Falcon's car that night did not match the silver gun the victim described to police in her 911 call. Smith's charges were eventually dropped because the victim said she wasn't sure he was involved, but she said she was certain Falcon was the gunman. Now, Falcon says that surveillance image of a man who robbed a 7-Eleven the same night the pizza delivery woman was robbed could have made the victim do a double take. But as I reveal in this investigation, the victim and the jury never got a chance to see it. This is a surveillance image of a man robbing a 7-Eleven in Chesapeake on January 23rd, 2012. And this is Brian Falcon's mugshot following his arrest for the robbery of a pizza delivery woman earlier that same night. Yes, I think it definitely could be mistaken. Falcon and his attorneys believe this man robbed the pizza delivery woman at 8.20 p.m. off Eaton Way, then traveled about three miles away to this 7-Eleven on Providence Road and robbed them at 10.24 p.m. That picture, those circumstances, the facts in that, I mean, tip the scales, I think, heavily in favor of Brian. But Falcon's former attorney says they never brought it up at trial because police never provided them with this evidence until after Falcon was convicted. We did what we're legally obligated to do. Stick around. You'll hear why the Chesapeake Police Chief says they did nothing wrong by not handing over the 7-Eleven evidence to Falcon's attorney. For Bryant, it's tragic. It's inexcusable. Falcon says he and his fellow basketball coach, Brandon Smith, were smoking marijuana in his car outside Smith's home right before police arrested them for the robbery of the pizza delivery woman in a nearby apartment complex. Falcon says while he was in the back of the police car, he heard about the 7-Eleven robbery on the police scanner and thought, You know, that, that's probably the person who committed the crime. Police never investigated a possible link between the two cases, even though the 7-Eleven robber's description was similar to the pizza delivery woman's initial description of her robber to 911. African American, 5'7", facial hair. Did it bear some additional looking to see, oh wait, do we have the wrong people? Could this other guy have done it? I think you need to take that question in light of all that the detectives on scene that night had with them. Court records show an officer claims Falcon and Smith were wearing hoodies that night, like what the victim described in her 911 call, but it's not what they were wearing when police arrested them. They were already in handcuffs when another officer brought the victim to get a look at them. She said she wasn't sure about Smith. His charges were later dropped, but she said she was 100 percent sure Falcon was the gunman who robbed her. I got handcuffs behind my back. I'm surrounded by police. I, I look guilty. Falcon and Smith's attorneys tried to get information about the 7-Eleven robbery from police in 2012, but police denied their Freedom of Information Act request, citing an open criminal investigation. Falcon's first trial in 2013 ended in a hung jury. To put that clip in front of her and say, is this the man that robbed you? And just have her look at that and w whatever expression she had, whatever hesitation she had, whatever pause she had, as she looked at that would have sent a message to the jury. Court records reveal a detective later gave approval for all evidence in the unsolved 7-Eleven case to be destroyed, including the VHS tape of the surveillance video in March 2015, the year before Falcon's second trial in 2016. It too ended in a mistrial.
But Chief Calvin Wright says there wasn't anything dubious about the destruction, saying the detective was never aware of any request for the evidence. He also says its destruction was within protocol to destroy evidence in unsolved cases not tied to prosecution or appeals. And the chief says the courts never ordered police to turn the evidence over. I think this is that one in a million case where perhaps it would be beneficial for him, but we're not the arbiters to determine whether he gets that evidence or not. The court is. Falcon's third trial in 2018 ended in his conviction. The judge sentenced him to more than five years in prison. Here I am incarcerated for a crime that I didn't commit. But get this, after Falcon's conviction, one of his attorneys directly reached out to the detective over that 7-Eleven robbery investigation. And that's when the detective found this surveillance image on an old laptop, something the detective said they didn't even realize they had until that very moment. They were told that the evidence had been uh, destroyed. Attorney David Hargan appealed Falcon's conviction based on the newly discovered 7-Eleven evidence. He has the same uh, skin tone, facial features, facial hair. You can see all that in the photograph. But judges at every level denied the appeal. The victim has never wavered on her testimony, but Falcon can't help but wonder if this image would have created doubt. I'm a victim as well for the simple fact that I, I'm, I was wrongly accused, wrongly charged, wrongly convicted. Now, the Chief Wright says Falcon's attorneys could have filed a preservation of evidence petition with the court for that 7-Eleven evidence, and that would have uh, kept them from destroying it. We should mention, we did reach out to the victim about the 7-Eleven evidence, but she did not want to speak with us. Falcon's only way forward, an appeal to the United States Supreme Court or a pardon from Governor Northam. A petition to get the governor's attention in this case is nearing 2,000 signatures.